Hey, this is Mike. So last week, we made our first attempt of setting up a serverless WordPress application. It took a little longer than expected. In the meantime, I had a chance to sit down and talk with the original developer of the Ymir app. So he gave me some tips, and based off of his feedback, I'm going to go ahead and try it once more with another project to see if we can get a smoother deployment. So let's go ahead and take a look at what, what we're doing today. So assuming that you've already set up the Ymir app and your AWS account uh, and installed your CLI tools, I think that we're ready to begin. So today, based off of the feedback from the Ymir app developer, uh, we're going to go ahead and attempt to install a blank version of WordPress uh, using the WP CLI. Um, after that, we'll go ahead and we'll throw that uh, install into the cloud. So we'll run Ymir it and put that into the cloud. We will then test the serverless connection. After we confirm that everything works, we'll go ahead and we'll attempt to migrate our original uh, WordPress site files over into the, into the new install and we'll push it back into the cloud and we'll see if everything continues to work. So hopefully with that, um, it'll take our uh, deployment ta uh, time down to, um, <laughs> If, if I had if I had to uh, make a successful uh, guess, I'd say 10 minutes would be pretty awesome. Um, not necessarily including any additional time to you know sync files, but just roughly 10, 10 minutes of actual work. So let's go ahead. Let's try it out. So the first thing we'll install uh, WordPress just via the command line. Okay. So that looks like it's worked. We'll run the Ymir uh, init command. We'll give our project a name. So because um, our core uh, download doesn't include a WP config file, uh, Ymir doesn't know yet. So we're going to tell it WordPress. So I'm going to go ahead and create a database server. And of course, a network is attached to it. We'll go ahead and set up a database server size. We'll install the plugin. And we will try to deploy without a container the first time. All right, so taking a look, everything is here. I'm going to go ahead and set up the WP config file, and we'll just test the um, initial install. So far, so good. So next, I'm going to go ahead and set up a virtual host in MAMP, and we will then test this Blink install. OK. So let's try this out real quick. Awesome. That's great. So next, We'll go ahead and deploy this into Ymir. Awesome. So it's been a few minutes, and it looks like this is now completed. So let's go ahead and let's check it out. Let's see how well it works. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to compare it to our local install. So this is what we have locally. And going to our new install. Great. Looks like our database is working just fine. Let's test this out. That's pretty good. Okay, so um, now we have our base installation working. We've got our base installation deployed. So the next thing that we're going to do, or let's just quickly do some housekeeping here. So we've created our initial base installation using the WordPress CLI. Uh, we've initialized that project into Ymir. We've tested the deployment in the cloud. And so now uh, we will go ahead and begin to migrate our existing project files over into our blank setup. So just to show you how that looks, 
Um, this is my my project here. And of course, I've done my best to hide the identity of my customer just to maintain some privacy. So um, now I'm going to take this site here and I'll copy the files over into uh, into our base install. So now I'm going to copy the production files into my base project. So here's the base project that we've set up. And in this case, I'm going to keep everything in the root directory the same, uh, but I will replace the WP contents folder. Um, the things that I want to keep in place, actually, I don't want to replace the entire WP contents folder. No, I do. I'm going to replace the entire WP contents folder. The only change that the WP contents folder uh, will have that uh, will be missing will be the Ymir plugin. So we'll go ahead and just reinstall that after we make this this merge. Um, and then I'll manually update the WP config file. So uh, copying these files over, it's just the WP content and just a couple extra project specific files, not WordPress related. We'll go ahead and just replace. Now I'm going to modify the WP con the config file. So after completing the file merge, in another browser tab, I went ahead and I loaded, I reloaded the URL just to confirm that I could see my my destination project. Looks pretty good. What do you think? All right, so moving on. So we're going to have to install the Ymir uh, plugin one more time. And then based off of the file size, if our new uh, WordPress project is too large, we might actually have to convert this into a Docker image. Let's go ahead and try uh, publishing this and just see what happens. All right, just as I expected, it looks like our project is too large and it's only too large by just a little. So I either need to remove a few files or um, we need to convert this to an image. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and just convert this to an image. Opening up the Ymir config file, let's take a look. So it looks like we need to create a Docker file. So let's give that a, a, a shot real quick. Ymir, Docker, create. And then we're going to, to place it. So would you like to configure your project for content? Yes. Okay, great. So what's happened here? So now in our project, we have this Docker file. Looks pretty easy. Um, looking at our Ymir YAML file, we can also see that this project now has this image set for the deployment. So um, it looks like both the deployment uh, for the staging and the production will, will use the same Docker file. So now that we have our Docker image set up, let's go ahead and just try deploying one more time. So now my production site has finished deploying into the AWS cloud. Let's go ahead and jump over to the web browser and let's just see how it all looks. All right, not too bad. Um, so this is typically what I, I do expect when it comes to, um, uh, you know, serverless applications. So comparing it to what I have locally, we can see there are a few assets that are missing. And um, probably what's happened here is these assets are either hardcore, hard coded inside of the uh, template or they're, they're just getting lost somewhere. So let's take a look. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. So... In this case, it does appear that it's referencing the assets from S3. I did have this issue last week. So last week I had to open up my file transfer tool and I, I had to migrate the S3 files um, manually. For, for whatever reason, not everything was migrated over into the, the S3 cloud. Um, so just let me get that set up real quick. So connecting to the S3 account using transmit 
I can see that the uploads folder is missing. I have another S3 account that I'm connected to from the project that we were working on last week. And you can see that the uploads folder should be present. The assets folder, I'm assuming the assets folder is what's used when um, our initial project is then zipped and uploaded and put into S3. So in this case, we have our assets, but we're missing our uploads. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this over. This is probably a couple hundred megs, so we'll just give it a, a moment. All right, so now I've just finished manually copying all my files from my uploads folder into S3. So at this point, let's go ahead and just refresh and we'll see what happens here. Let me try just, oh, there's actually one thing that we probably have to do. So inside of S3, I do have to choose the read permissions on this. So now all of the ACLs have been set on, on a, our files. So uh, going back to our browser and refreshing, we can see that everything loads as expected now. So this is pretty good. Clicking around, we can get an idea for speed. And this isn't too bad either. So now let's go ahead and try benchmarking the new serverless website against the original server-based counterpart. And for that, we'll go ahead and just move this to a new window. There we are. Okay. So I have the, um, the original server-based website here in the first tab and then the serverless on the second one. Um, and I've done the same for Pingdom and also for PageSpeed Insights. So we can see here that the, the server-based uh, website has just a, a score of a 67, a page size of a 5.3 megs, and a load time of about five and a half seconds. Our serverless version, we can see that our load time has dramatically increased. Our page size has also dramatically increased. Our rec requests have been uh, trimmed up a bit, and we've got a slightly better performance grade. This is great. This is this is all. Uh, this has all happened without us do, performing any additional action on our side. This is just all the benefits of of CloudFront, um, having our assets in S3, and the uh, some of the work that the Ymir app does for us. Taking a look at how that compares with PageSpeed Insight, we can see that PageSpeed Insight gives us a score of uh, 48 on the server-based implementation, and when we go serverless we can see that that's jumped to an 81. So you can see that Google prefers serverless. That's pretty awesome. And again, uh, most notably, we could see the interaction times on the serverless environment are much quicker uh, as compared to the server-based counterpart. I think that's, that's very nice. I love it. So what do you think? If this video was at all helpful to you, uh, if you like it, please go ahead and be sure to give me a thumbs up. You've watched this far, you might as well. Uh, if you want more content like this, let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thanks again. Bye-bye.